what we can. All right, thank you very much for that, M. Work on those skills. Now, the Sea Shepherd is about to embark on its annual journey deep into the Southern Ocean in pursuit of Japan's whaling fleet. And the captain of the Sea Shepherd, Paul Watson, joins us now. I was just saying, Paul, um, I know you do spend a lot of time on land, but I'm so welded to the idea of you being at the, the helm of the, the ship, I didn't recognise you. Oh, well, thanks. But um, you've had these ships in place in Australia for some time now. There's one in Hobart, I believe, a couple oh. of... Well, the Bob Barker's in Sydney right now, moved to Hobart, uh, and the other two, the Steve Irwin and the Bridget Bardot, are on their way to Australia now. Okay, and uh, once the season starts in December, they'll be all deployed in the Southern Ocean? Yes, the Bob Barker out of Hobart and the Bridget Bardot and the Steve Irwin out of Fremantle. Okay, so the, the one in Sydney that's going to be on display is a, is a good um, public relations building exercise for you because this is probably the, the most recognised ship in the seas now. That and the Steve Irwin, yes. Yeah, so um, how do you live with that, um, that split view of you, I guess, that uh, some people think you're a hero, some people think you're uh, a criminal of the high seas, a kind of a pirate? Well, I've always measured our success by how many, um, how many hate letters we get and death threats we get, because, you know, if you're not upsetting anybody, you're not doing anything. And uh, we're getting a lot of people upset, but at the same time, we're having a lot of successes. Uh, last year, uh, the Japanese are only able to get 17% of their quota. We saved 850 whales. Okay. What species are you targeting this year? Uh, they'll be going after minke whales uh, and uh, fin whales, but they do have humpbacks on their, on their kill quota list. Okay. Well, the, the numbers of humpback whales are definitely increasing, at least along our eastern seaboard. Uh, that's been easily uh, observable to, to anyone who lives along the coastline. Yeah, well, they have been coming back slowly, but still their numbers are very, uh, very small compared to their historical levels. All right. Do you see them getting back to historical levels? Is it hunting alone that has caused the problem in their depletion? No, there's so many problems in the oceans. Acidification, uh, global warming, overfishing, uh, harvesting a krill, uh, so many problems. All, it's not just whales. All marine life is in trouble in our oceans. We're simply over-exploiting our marine resources. Yeah, that's a whole broader issue, isn't it? Uh, what are the Japanese saying about you in, uh, in the build-up? Do they say anything to you in the off-season, if, if you like, or do they try to just ignore you? Well, this is going to be a very interesting year. They've allocated $27 million Australian dollars just to stop us this year, and that's unprecedented. The Prime Minister of Japan said, the, in fact, the only reason they're returning is they won't surrender to us. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be quite a challenge this year, but I'm confident we'll be, getting, we'll be able to get into position to stop them once again. How will they spend $27 million? What will they use that for? We have no idea. We feel that they may, may be chartering a, a vessel and putting uh, security guards or mercenaries or getting a helicopter. We, don't, uh, we do know that they've been allocated that amount of money, and we do know that they're very angry with us, and... Uh, They've, out, they, they've actually designated us an eco-terrorist organization, although they're, they're the ones that are breaking the laws. So are they willing to fight you in the courts as well? Oh, they don't want to go to court with us, no. Uh, they have no charges against us. They know what they're doing is wrong. They know that they're breaking international conservation law. And their ships are going down there this year. The Nishan Maru burns heavy fuel, and it's banned south of 60. So they're openly violating that regulation. They're violating all the regulations. Paul, what, what is their, their, their uh, target quota? this year and what do you hope to keep it to? They want to take 935 minke whales, they also have 50 humpbacks and 50 fins on their, uh, on their kill quota list and uh, our objective is zero kills. Last year they killed 187, we saved 850. Uh, I think we're going to try and do better this year. It sounds like it could be the most dangerous mission yet. It is always dangerous, but considering their anger and the amount of uh, money that they're putting into stop us, it could be the most dangerous campaign well, so far. Well, I'm one of the guys who looks at you as a hero, so uh, good luck. Um, the, the ones that look at you as a criminal, I guess uh, they have their own view on that, but um, there's no doubt that you've saved hundreds of thousands of whales. Well, thank you. Thank you, Paul Watson. Back to you, Alicia. Thank you very much, Cam. Well, two Aussie firefighters love their job so much, they've just each clocked up 50 years in the job. And Weekend Today's Early Walsh jumped on board a fire engine to catch up with them. <laughs> When Brian Johnson and Bill King started with Fire and Rescue New South Wales, their helmets were made of brass and fire engines looked like... ...trees there from around the world. For these fireys, there's no sign of slowing down anytime soon. I think it's still exciting for us. It keeps your mind active. Your